And good morning, everyone. This is Nurturing Big Ideas Today with Yvonne DeVita and my special guest, Susan Epstein. And Susan is a coach. And I want to kind of put air, air things around that because she's more than a coach. She's actually someone who will partner with you. She's someone who invests in you, no matter who you are. And Susan was uh, originally a therapist. She understands people. She's a people person. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Yvonne. Happy now, to one, one of the things that I'm fascinated about is how you and I talked a few minutes ago about the concept of you enroll 99%, you said, maybe, of, of people who come to you for coaching because you really want to give them that personal touch. Talk a little bit about that for us. So over the years in the coaching industry, um, it's become very big business. And you see it with these huge launches, you know, that go over two weeks with videos and selling online programs where there's no human being attached to it. And then there's the, you know, learn as you go kind of thing, which is very big online. And I think that works for some things, right. but for building a business, um, I always had to personally have a mentor or a business coach myself. I still do. And for me, I want to work with somebody who has walked in the steps before me and I want to pick their brain and have them tell me, don't bother with that. And I think that there's a lot of stuff um, online that is archaic that people are still buying and then they're frustrated because it doesn't work for them. So I, person I have a real personal stake in my mission is that everybody who wants to build a coaching business um, should be able to do so and should be able to afford it, but they should be able to afford personal help not just a program for $297 or $2,000. They should be able to afford a business coach. So I have modeled my business in affordability for all levels of people, different places where they're starting. But no matter that, and we have over 300 clients right now that are getting coaching, I know every person. And if it's not working for them, they get a call with me and I try to help them figure out what's where they're stuck or what's going on, even though they might have another coach in my on my team, I'm still it's kind of, I kind of like talk about it like we're the Mayo Clinic for coaches. <laughs> That's we, really interesting. Yeah, we, we operate on a concierge level, team level, and we all have different skills, skill sets. So if I'm working with somebody and they need to know how to do something that I don't know how to do, I'll like go have a session with so and so and then come back to me. Or they would say, go, go talk to Susan and brainstorm and then come back to me. So Number one person is not me, the CEO, it's the client. Right, and that is so important today. And I, I love hearing you say that um, this is not like those launches that go out. Um, you know, we're getting ready to do a small thing for DIY people, but I actually believe um, DIY is just like a step to show you what needs to happen. But That's you right. need to go then on to the coach. And I think someone like you is a perfect fit for, especially for women that have expertise. I say they have talent. I say there's talent in all of us. And sometimes you're not sure what that talent is or you're not sure what to do with it. So, um, Let's segue that kind of into the idea of believe it, build it, and become it, which is what we do at Nurturing Big Ideas, and it involves reinvention. Have you ever reinvented yourself? <laughs> Many times. <laughs> of course, yeah, absolutely. My whole life. <laughs> And what does that mean? So I have also reinvented myself, and this is kind of a reinvention also, but it's really still me. I've always been the person who wanted to get out there and help people, and I, I have a feeling you're that way also. Yeah, yeah. I started as a, a social worker. Mm -hmm. I went to, went to UC Berkeley and got my degree, my MSW, and worked for many, many years as, um, you know, a social worker in agencies, didn't have my own business in the beginning, you know, in my twenties. Um, and then I, I met a woman and, um, in one of the agencies I worked for and, and she was putting lipstick on at the end of the day. And I said, where are you going? And she said, I'm going to my private practice. And I said, what's that? Now this is, a, this is in the eighties. And I didn't know that social workers could 
being in private practice, she said, well, I work for a psychiatrist and he, you know, we contract with him. And I said, what is contracting? Like I was so green. I didn't know any of that. Wow. And I said, I could do that. And, and then I could like not work. And I could, um, I was pregnant with my second mm-hmm. I could go home and then, you know, leave after dinner when they were tucked in and see a few clients. Like I, I kind of started figuring out how I could be home with my children. Yes. And so I just started writing letters. This is before internet, obviously. And uh, I think I wrote to three psychiatrists. I live in a really small area of Connecticut. And one of them answered me and said, come, let's talk. And hired me two weeks later. I I had just had my daughter. She was (laughs) three weeks old when I started. Yeah. And I found a little home daycare across the street from the private practice and I drop her off for two hours, see a couple of people, then pick her up and nurse her and go home. So that was the beginning of that reinvention. And it was about being able to be with my kids Mm -hmm. and still be professional, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the key, I think, is that we have different stages in our life and and those stages encourage us to reinvent ourselves. And um, I mean, I've been there. I've done that. But it, that sounds really amazing with a small baby. I haven't done that. Um, I know people who have, and I have such admiration. And I also want them to, to hear from people like yourself who have done it. And it wasn't, it was hard probably, but it also was driven from the inside because you had a desire both to be your own person, but also to help those others. Yeah, there was no choice for me. I mean, for the three months I stayed home with both my kids, I thought it was going to go out of my mind. I mean, I <laughs> loved being a mom, but it was very isolating for me. Um, the first, and that's first, okay to, to admit yeah, that. But I knew that, you know, I knew it. Um, I, I definitely made friends and joined groups and all that kind of stuff just to be whatever, but I needed the stimulation. And I wanted, I also, you know, I also was raised by a working mom. My mom was mm-hmm. a school nurse. So, you know, my, my parents and my dad was an engineer. So I, I never knew a, a stay at home mom. Like that didn't, that wasn't a, a choice for me. It wasn't, and not necessarily it was a choice, but it wasn't like um, in my right. wheelhouse that that's what, what I was supposed to do. No, I was supposed to work. So mm-hmm. somehow, I mean, but I had to make it work on my terms. Right. On your terms. Well, yeah. I, I, I think that a lot of younger women today um, were hearing, um, I, I hate labels, but we're, we're talking some beyond younger than baby boomers. Um, they want to do things. They have the energy. They have the drive. They have what you had because they don't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Right. Uh, which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. I was a stay-at-home mom for a while, and um, it did it it did fulfill me. But that's me. I, you know, I'm not. I remember my mom worked, and I thought, gee, she could never do this. She could never have been a stay-at-home mom. So, so reinvention is something that everyone does, and sometimes you need a little help when you're reinventing yourself because you you bring too much of the old baggage with you. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that I was able to do it. I think when I look back of all the big changes I made, it's that I followed somebody else that had already done it. So I wasn't necessarily in those years because there was no such thing as coaching, but there was women had come before me, like this woman at, who was already doing moonlighting and, and working during the day, right? And then after that, I, I heard about coaching in, 20, in 2002. And so I hired a coach to find out what that was all about, you know, more like pick her brain for three months. And she said, well, you really want to do this. A lot of social workers are leaving social work and going into this now. This is, you know, like literally 18 years ago or whatever. And I said, that sounds good. I, I, I was kind of, I was working at that point, nine hours a day. Mm. Managed care had happened. So when I used to make a hundred dollars an hour, I was making 50 because of insurance. So I had to see twice as many clients in order to make the money I had been making years before. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, my kids were getting a little bigger. They needed more. I wanted to be, I wanted to be there, but I was like now wrapped up in this practice that had 30 clients a week. So, you know, don't ask, don't wish, what is it? Don't wish, don't ask for what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. yeah. And I realized then that I needed um, kind of like a new mentor to figure this out. And so at that point, I ended up looking for a a coach because I heard about that, right? And then I saw how I could really help people, um, but I could um, 
do it on my terms again, which was, um, you know, charging for value rather than fee for service. You know, therapy is- well, That's an, an interesting concept. Tell people what that means because it, it's really not easy yeah. for people no, who not. live in a, a I'm, I'm paying you um, $50 an hour, you know, because it's, it's um, a product. It's like buying a product, but it's not a product. Talk about that. I kind of um, do a comparison when I, when I talk about that. And it's kind of like if you were going to have your floors redone, and you would get three bids and one bid would be 2000 and the next bid would be 5,000 and the other bid would be 10,000. And then you read all the reviews on those people and got the, and, and the $10,000 guy is like, Oh my gosh, he comes in, he does it. It's beautiful. You were only out of your house for 24 hours. Um, he cleans up, he vacuums, you know, every, he'll even take your cats to his house, you know, whatever, whatever it is that that's, a, you're going to pay more money for value. Mm -hmm. The labor might be the same, the hours that it takes him to do your floors as the 2000, but the $2,000 guy doesn't clean up after himself. He doesn't show up when he says he's going to. So in building a coaching business, if I can help you get the result that you want, um, you might pay anything. Like if you could tell a woman, I'm going to coach you for three months and you're going to lose the weight you want. And for the rest of your life, you will never gain it back again. How much is that worth to you? Wow. Sure. I think, I think we'd all reach into our 401ks and give somebody 10 grand, you know, for three months because we never have to talk about it again, deal with it. We could eat what we wanted. We, we would have the keys to the kingdom in terms of health and weight loss. Yeah, so for, sure. Sure. for sure. When people come to me and say like, I want a business and I want to build groups and masterminds and I want to hit, you know, 50,000 in the next, you know, six months or whatever their goal is. I'm like, well, I can help you with that let's let's look at that and this is my fee for helping you do that right that's the whole fee um you can pay the whole thing at once or do you need a payment plan not do you need an hourly breakdown of my labor because that's not what it is exactly. or let me buy a car the car's twenty five thousand dollars how much do you want to pay a month for that car yeah you're buying you're buying the thing not something Right. Like you said, a value that's going to end right. up changing your life, transforming your life Absolutely. into what you want it to be. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's what it means by value. And when I figured that out, I stopped working nine hours a day. I started working half a day and making, you know, 10 times the money that I made when I was a therapist. Yeah. yeah I so really like that. that. I really like that. Um, I'm going to make sure I mention that in the written part of the blog post. So tell us what inspires you. I, I, I ask this a lot of people because there are so many um, in the internet and Facebook and all that stuff that we do. And we share all these inspirational quotes. They're wonderful. They're absolutely wonderful. I do it too. But what really inspires you to actually get up and do what you do on a daily basis without getting burned out? What inspires me is creativity um, and knowing that I can make stuff and build stuff. And that's why I love having my own business because I have worked for other people. No, we don't do that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to go there. I can go anywhere I want. So every day, if I was a painter, would be a blank canvas for me to either think what I want to think, build what I want to build and then rein myself in and say, not now because I have to stay focused. But it, I love the brainstorming, um, the thinking of new ideas of when something's not working, solving the puzzle and figuring out why, why didn't people open that email? Mm -hmm. why, didn't, why didn't a lot of people come to this thing I did? You know, it's, I don't get upset about it. I don't feel like a failure. I just scratch my head and say, this is an ish This is interesting. Like, was it the weather? Was it, um, the topic, was it my subject line? What was it? And I try to do it again and again and again until I get it right. And if I do it like five times and it's still not right, then I'm like, this isn't right. Like I'm going to let this one go. Yes. And there I, you go. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is the key for me. That is the key people learning when to let go. And that's something that I write about and talk about is sometimes this this thing you want to do or this thing you think is so important to the business right. you're building really isn't. You really should let it go. 
so the other thing that I see when um, I, I sent you my little email and suggested things to talk about is that you're a fan of Maya Angelou. And of course, all of us are. I share her Phenomenal Woman poem on a regular basis. Um, and she is really very inspirational um, to me. Tell me what she means to you. She, for me, um, is the voice of metaphor. And so when I'm, you know, all jumbled up in my head and I just need to see it in a different way, it's kind of like I used the painting metaphor before too, like mm -hmm. just not being so intellectual all the time or figuring how to fix things, but just allowing imagery um, is very um, meditative for me and soothing. And I just really always admired her. Um, I always had a soft spot for poetry in general anyway. As a little girl, my father sat on the couch and read to me every night poems. Wow. Like I remember, I have like a thousand poems in my head that he's read wow. to me. Yeah. And he's 97 years old and we still do it. We still no, read a that book. Is, that is perfect because that really embodies everything we just talked about. Because yeah. um, I say life is poetry. And... It, well, Susan, we're coming to the end of our little talk today. I really enjoyed this. I, I want people to understand that you have and are giving more than just this coaching thing that people talk about. I really am getting away myself uh, from that word. And you did early on say another word that I think is very powerful, and it's mentoring. Yes. Um, and I think that young women and, and baby boomers and um, women out there who really want to do something else. They don't want to work in the office and sit in the chair or work in the um, grocery store, wherever it is, but they have something they want to do. It's really a good idea to go to Susan Epstein's uh, website, <laughs> look at her a little further. That is a really fabulous website, by the way. I really love your website. And by the way, folks, this is something you should do for yourself. This is something that when you're ready to take that talent and turn it into magic, Susan is a really good person to talk to. So Susan, thank you so much for being on Nurturing Big Ideas today. Thanks, Yvonne. Yvonne DeVita, we'll talk to you again next week.